Hello friends, how was your week? Great, I hope. Remember the lesson we learned the last week? We learned about the creation of the world. Wasn't that lesson great? But now this lesson is about the creation of man. But before we start the creation of man, can you see what I made here? I made a flower vase with, out of mud and I decorated it with flowers inside of the flower vase. And this is some is somehow like a like a person or a human being. This is like Adam, the first per, the first person to be created in the whole world. Remember the last lesson we learned? We learned what God created from day 1 to day 6. And day six, do you remember what we talked about? We talked about um, how God created the human beings and the animals on the land. So this time we're going to be talking about the creation of man. But before we start, our memory verse comes from Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 to 31. And it says, Then God said, and now we will make human beings. They will be just like us and reassemble us. They will have power over the fish inside the water, the birds in the sky, and the wild animals and domestic animals on the land. God created human beings, making them to be just like himself in his image and likeness. He created them male and female and blessed them and said, Have many children so that your descendants will live all over the earth and bring it under their control. I am putting, the, I am putting you in charge of the fish, the birds and all the wild and domestic animals. I have provided all kinds of grain and all kinds of fruit that you can eat. But for all the wild animals and for all the birds, I have provided grass and leafy plants for food. And it was done. God looked at everything he had created and made and was very pleased. Evening passed and morning came, and that was the sixth day. God created Adam and saw that Adam was lonely in the Garden of Eden. So God decided to give Adam an assistant, and the assistant was called Eve. Eve was a lady and Adam was a man. God said that they may eat everything in the garden except for the fruit the of except for the tree in the middle of the garden god said if you eat that fruit in the middle of the garden of eternity you will die or i may punish you so if so a snake coming down the tree and and told eve eve eat the apple the the snake was called a serpent. So Eve did not know what to do than to eat the apple because almost all the fruits in all the trees ex except for the middle tree of the garden remained. So Eve decided to follow what the serpent had said and gave Adam the fruit. Then God spoke to them and said, why did you eat the, the fruit in the middle of the garden and I told you not to eat it? And then Eve said that the serpent told her to eat it. But God was very disappointed in Eve and Adam. So God told Eve to become, to have children and Adam to go and work in the farm. You know we cannot live without a challenge. The challenge for this week is to look at your friends and see how they are created uniquely in God's image and likeness. 
But before I go, I would like us to pray, bow our heads and close our eyes. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for this day. Thank you for the gift of life. We praise you because you are a good God, because you are merciful. Thank you for giving us wisdom through this lesson and understanding. Before we leave, please bless our family, bless our friends, and help the children to understand that everyone is created uniquely in God's image and likeness. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And the memory verse for this week comes from the book of Psalms, chapter 139, verse 14. And it says, I praise you because you are to be feared. All you do is strange but wonderful. I know it with all my heart. Bye-bye. Good morning, boys and girls. Thank you so much for tuning in to your lesson today. This is for the 6 to 12 year olds. For the babies, I hope you enjoyed your lesson as you're taken through by Zaria. Now, today's lesson for the 6 to 12 is about the fall. The word, the fall. And this story, we find it in the book of Genesis, chapter 3, from verse 1 to 24. But I will read just from verse 1 to 9. So go and grab your Bible so that we read together, so that we understand the Bible lesson together. Let's read. The, sn the snake was sneakier. You know how to people who sneak around now? The snake was sneakier than any of the other wild animals that the Lord God had made. One day it came to the woman and asked, Did God tell you not to eat the fruit from any tree in the garden? The woman answered, God said we could eat fruit from any tree in the garden except the one in the middle. He told us not to eat fruit from that tree or even to touch it. If we do, we will die. No, you won't, the snake replied. God understands what will happen on the day you eat fruit from that tree. You will see what you have, you will see what you have done and you will know the difference between right and wrong, just as God does. The woman stared at the fruit, stared at the fruit, and it looked beautiful and tasty. Hmm. She wanted the, the, she wanted the wisdom that it would give to her, and she ate some of the fruit. Her husband was there with her, so she gave some to him, and he ate it too, at once. At once they saw what they had done and they realized they were naked. Then they sewed fig leaves together, trying to cover themselves. Verse 8. Late in the afternoon, when the breeze began to blow, the man and the woman heard God walking in the garden. So they hid behind some trees. Hmm. Wow. What, what is the word of God telling us this morning? That... The snake went and talked to Eve, okay? Eve, Adam and Eve were the first people who were created. The serpent or the, or the snake went and lied, lied to Eve and tempted her to eat fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And she ate the fruit, then she gave, it, she gave some to Adam and Adam, gave, and Adam ate it. After that, of course, now they had sinned against God. So after they had sinned against God, Adam and Eve knew that they were naked. So they sewed some fig trees together to make themselves some covering, like some clothes. And out of that, a curse resulted. We'll see that if you continue reading, if you continue reading that verse, we see that God cursed Adam and Eve as a result of that sin and he said this is God saying that women will experience pain at childbirth and men and men will labor for the food and sweat of their faces sweat off their faces and the ground of the earth itself will be so hard to bring about food it will be full of thorns and thistles so this we see in the bible but also now God made a promise God made a promise that the woman who is Eve would have a child or a descendant who would crush, who would crush the serpent's head, that is Satan's head and defeat him. And how did God fulfill this, boys and girls? Hmm. Before we get into how God fulfilled that, I want you to understand that when Adam and Eve sinned, it caused a separation between God and man. 
when Adam and Eve sinned, it caused a separation. And so man and woman and God, man was not able to fellowship or to see to sit together with God in the garden. There was a separation because they had sinned. And hiding in shame and trying to fix ourselves. You see how Adam and Eve, we have read that, oh, they realized they were naked. And so they were trying to steal some leaves so that they can cover themselves. You know, hiding and trying to fix ourselves are some of the ways that people try to handle their sins. Hmm, that sounds familiar. For example, if you do something that mommy told you not to do, or maybe mommy said today make sure that uh, you only watch cartoon between 1 and 2 p.m. But you decide, hmm, since mama's gone to work, I will go and watch cartoon or maybe I'll go outside and play with, with people that mama told you not to play with. So how do we try to fix that? Because we know that we have sinned. We know that we have disobeyed our parents. So you find that we try to hide in shame or we try to make everything perfect in the house so that when mom comes, they will not be able to know whether we watched cartoon or whether we went outside or not. So hiding in shame or maybe trying to fix ourselves to do things in a way that nobody can tell what we did are some of the ways that people do or people behave when they have sinned. What is sin? Sin is anything that we think say or do that does not please God. For example, uh, lying to our parents or parents neglecting their children, ne parents not taking care of their children, children disobeying their parents, you know, and all these things, people doing bad things, abusing each other, fighting, all these things are sin because God does not approve for that. God does not approve for us to fight, to abuse, to steal, all those things God does not approve. And spiritual death occurs, you know, a separation occurs between us and God when we sin, when we do bad things. But thank God that he made a promise. He made a promise to us that he would send his son through a woman. A woman would bear, would be with child and give birth to a child who will come and crush the serpent's head. And this we see when Jesus came through a woman and he was born and he came and died for your sins and for my sins. So, as much as the fall happened, as much as we have all sinned and we have fallen short of the glory of God, God still saves us. He still fulfilled the promise by sending his son, Jesus Christ, to come and die for you and for me. So today, boys and girls, I want you to remember that when you do bad things at home, say sorry, do not, let's not lie to our parents, let's not disobey our parents. The Bible says, children, obey your parents in the Lord. So let's obey our parents, let's be good boys and girls. And also, remember that God has given us salvation so we can invite Jesus into our hearts to be our friends, to be our Lord, to save us from sin and the things that make it so difficult to become good boys and girls. The sin that sometimes we find ourselves lying or bullying or fighting or using abusive language, all those things, God is able to help us when we invite him into our hearts to become our friend and our Lord and Savior. So before we go today, we have our memory verse from the book of Romans chapter 3 verse 23 which says all of us have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. All of us we have sinned and we have fallen short of God's glory. But remember that in Jesus Christ we have salvation and we have life. So I'll give you time if you have not received Jesus into your heart to be your friend just we are going to say this prayer together right we're going to say this prayer together and we'll invite him into our hearts and we'll ask him to help us but if you have already received jesus into your heart very well done yes you are on the right direction keep praying keep trusting god because he loves you so if you're there close your eyes let's pray together let's pray say this after me dear lord jesus I welcome you into my heart to be my friend and my Lord and Savior. Starting today, teach me your ways and I pray that you will help me to follow you and to live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And for every one of us, let's pray together. Our Father, we thank you for our lessons, lesson that we've had today. 
you are reminding us that yes, all of us have sinned, but we thank you for the salvation that we receive through Jesus. I pray that each of these children, oh God, who have watched us, that my God, they will walk with you, they will love you as their friend, they will serve you with all their, and love you with all their hearts, with all their might, with all their minds in the name of Jesus. So Father, may you give us a great week ahead, may you protect us, and may you watch over us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Have a good week. Bye. Thank you.